Hello and welcome to another Brawl video. Today we're taking a look at Zada Hedron Grinder as our commander. This 4 mana 3-3 three, three says whenever we cast an instant or sorcery spell that targets only Zada, we copy that spell for each other creature we control that the spell could target, and each copy targets a different one of those creatures. So Zada is kind of a combo enabler, if you will, in a deck that can both go wide with lots of creatures and start targeting Zada with various pump spells that might increase power and toughness, but also maybe draw cards or generate treasure tokens so we can go off in one big turn and I've split up the deck into a few different categories to help with the breakdown but things are relatively simple on the one hand we've got our pump spells then we've got ways to generate additional mana to make it easier to cast lots of spells in one turn and then we've got our token makers which can help us go wide so we get the most out of Zada's ability and then a small miscellaneous section with more cards that will often overlap among different categories so that's the deck in a nutshell. Now taking a look at our pump spells, I've kind of split up the more exciting pump spells and then the more generic ones. And in the more exciting category, we've got quite a few cards that help us draw additional cards. Cards like Ancestral Anger will also pump up a creature and give a trample. But the important part here is draw a card, because now let's say we have Zada and three tokens in play. Now for one mana, we essentially get to draw four cards, which can get out of hand pretty quickly. Same with Might of the Meek. We've got Renegade Tactics. Don't really care too much about the ability, just care about targeting creatures and drawing cards. And then we also have a Fist of Flame, gets better the more cards we've already drawn. And then Flick a Coin is a little bit different. We deal one damage to any targets and then create a treasure token and draw a card. Now we could use this to just take out an opposing creature with one toughness, but we can also use it as a combo card once we have Zada in play with a few tokens, especially if those tokens can get above one toughness, maybe by casting another pump spell first, because now we can Flick a Coin Zada, deal one to each creature, both make a treasure and draw a card for each one of those creatures, and then a pull ahead that way as well. And then we've got more ways to generate treasure to set up those explosive turns with Ancestor's Aid, as well as Sudden Breakthrough, giving plus two plus two and first strike, as well as making a treasure token. So now we get to make a treasure token for each creature, making it easier to cast multiple pump spells in one turn. And then there's also Blazing Crescendo exiling the top card that we get to play until the end of our next turn. So that can also provide a nice bit of card advantage. So these are some of the more exciting pump spells we can throw into the mix. And then we've got the more generic ones, often just increasing power and toughness. Now Dreadmaw's Ire is actually one of the few pump spells I'm playing that specifically targets an attacking creature, which is a pretty big restriction when sometimes you just want to play Zada and immediately target it with a pump spell, even if it's not a way to give it haste, and then be able to pump up the the rest of your team, so that's why I only have the Dreadmoss Ire in that category. And then cards like Felonious Rage can give two extra power as well as haste, maybe replace a dead creature with a detective token, can also be a way for you to play Zada and then immediately attack with it as well as your other creatures, or maybe play Felonious Rage alongside some token makers to immediately be able to attack with everyone. So haste is also a pretty nice keyword to have. Infuriate just plus three plus two, Monstrous Rage also very powerful, leaving behind the monster roll token on all your creatures. Creatures. Reckless Rage is a sorcery, but can give creatures 3 extra power and haste, and can also be flashed back. Rush of Adrenaline plus 2 plus 1 and Trample at instant speed. Sandwich Sprint will be plus 2 plus 1 and haste, as well as Scry 1. And Scry 1 also gets pretty good if you have multiple tokens, as you can start digging for one of the more exciting payoffs. And then a Titan Strength also lets us cry one. Then at two mana we've got Antagonize, Brute Strength, Rampage, Siege Smash. A lot of these bump spells also giving Trample, which is important when you're going in for the kill. And then Team or Battle Rage, especially with another pump spell, both Double Strike and Trample can be a great way to close out the game. To Inferno can also give Double Strike, and Unleash Fury can double a creature's power. And then we get to the mana category, where at one mana we have a Ragavan as a way to maybe snowball some card advantage and treasure tokens early on, and we've got plenty of pump spells to back it up. We've got Brazen Collector, two on first strike making a mana when it attacks, similar to Magda making a treasure. Then we've got the Steamkin, if we cast enough red spells, can also generate three mana for us. Wily Goblin makes a treasure when it enters, and then we've got your more generic mana artifacts, Arcane Signet, Cold Steel Heart, Guardian Idol, Mindstone, and the Iron Crag. Then a Ruby Medallion will discount all our red spells by one, also makes it easier to cast a lot of spells in one turn. And Ornithopter of Paradise, also pretty good as it is a creature, so it gives us an extra body to maybe draw an extra card with all our various pump spells, and this one doesn't cost us any life, unlike maybe the Mirror, which you could also play. 
And then at 3 mana there's Captain Lannery, the hasty version of Magda. We've got Heraldic Banner naming red, also good in a tokens deck. And then Power Stone can make 2 mana if we get to untap with it. And finally the Artist can also make lots of treasure and also synergizes quite well with Zara as we get to make a treasure token for each copied pump spell as well. So that can also get out of hand. And then our token makers include Battlecry Goblin, of course better if we already have an established board. We're not going all in on the Goblin synergies in this build, but we do have lots of Goblin token makers which will synergize well with the Battlecry Goblin. There's Dragon Fodder for instance. Then Forbidden Friendship, just lots of 2 mana cards that make 2 tokens. Karizef makes an attacking Ragavan token, so then we often want to wait to cast our pump spells until after we generate the additional creature token, so we get more benefit out of it. Then a Krenko's Command, more goblins, Rally, good Rals Reinforcements, and then Young Pyromancer can make 1-1 one, one Elementals whenever we cast an instant or sorcery. Krenko also quite good with pump spells, increasing its power as we get to make more goblin tokens that way. A Legion Warboss can make a 1-1 one, one each turn. Squee, if it attacks, makes an attacking goblin as well. And then Hordling Outburst, just 3 goblins for 3 mana, still a pretty good rate. And finally, Storm Splitter can also be very fun if we manage to string together lots of instants and sorceries, and then make lots of copies of it as well. And then the miscellaneous section has Ornithopter as another free creature we can throw into the mix just to increase the number of creatures we have in play. Lightning Bolt has a bit of interaction. Charming Scoundrel is either discarding and drawing or making a treasure token, sort of like a Wily Goblin with haste. There's the Dreadhorde Arcanist, which is also great in a deck with lots of pump spells to increase its power, as we can get back more expensive spells out of the graveyard as well. Burgi can either make additional red mana to help us combo off, or we can play the Horn of Bounty if we're looking for more action. And then a Fable can can also make extra mana thanks to the Goblin Shaman token, but can also improve our hand on the second chapter. And finally Ashling, also a nice mix here, potentially improving our hand and generating additional mana for us. And then a mana base is very simple, 33 mountains to help enable Dwarven Mine to make an extra 1-1 token, Castle Emberth to pump the team, Arena of Glory to give creatures haste, not super relevant with Zada, but it can come up, especially with cards like Dreadmoss Ire, requiring Zada to be attacking, and then Crucible can make a pair of hasty 1-1 tokens, can also make the difference, Cavern of Souls versus Counter Spells, often naming Goblin, and then Mutavolt as an extra attacking creature, can also be a Goblin for those synergies. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Bonnie, a powerful blue-green ramp deck. So, yeah, we'll uh, try this out. Our hand is functional, although on the draw might be too slow against whatever our opponent is doing. They've got Kellen to play an extra line drop. Kellen also wait for them to destroy the Iron Crag. So, yeah, kind of feels bad to play it here. But the alternative would just be Scoundrel make a treasure or discard and draw, which is not much better. If they tap out for Kellen, at least I get to tap out for Zara. And our opponent goes for Gwena anyways. So, could play Squee, but our opponent could block either Squee or the token profitably. So maybe I do play Zada here. And then everything has haste anyway. Anger is a sorcery, so we won't be able to draw off the extra goblin token from Squee unless it goes unblocked. And now a silverback elder can blow up our artifacts as well. So do they have another mana elf they can cast? And no mana elf, but a bristly bill. Could have blown up Iron Crank, opponent decides to ramp with it instead. Alright, so our opponent's board is already starting to become quite scary. This turn we're maybe looking at Squee and Scoundrel. Scoundrel could make a treasure, so I can draw three with Ancestral Anger. Or I can discard and draw. Maybe look for another token maker before we cast Anger. Don't think we want to attack with Squee. Found an Ornithopter. Might just get blown up by the uh, Silverbank Elder, so I'll hang on to it. Can give it haste anyway. 
and that's a way to draw an extra card with anger next turn. So we'll see what happens. Opponent with a Mythweaver. All right, so lots of landfall triggers incoming. Goodbye, Iron Crag. Do they have a fetch land to go with it? They're also playing a Cobra, so maybe just looking for lands with Silverback now. Nope, opponent gains life, and they have a regular land left over. Make a copy with Mythweaver, trigger Bill, trigger Cobra. They can sank the clue to draw or play Kellen. So opponent's going off. And we may only have another turn or two here. So we need a particularly good turn ourselves. Finding a token maker would be a good start. Blazing Crescendo isn't bad either. Are we actually attacking this turn is a question. Need to make sure we don't die on the way back. Can maybe trade off for the Mythweaver as well. But yeah, I guess this is step one. And then we can wait on Crescendo until after we generate a Goblin token from Squee. Renegade Tactics is another draw. And a Rally. Now we could go for Medallion into Rally, which then also casts a 1-mana Crescendo. Versus just play Rally. And then maybe Renegade Tactics to keep drawing. And then maybe set up the attack next turn instead of right now. And then there's no real point in playing my artifacts, which probably just get destroyed. So we're drawing. Find a Stormkiln Artist and an Infuriate. So we should have the tools to set up something powerful next turn. If we get another turn here. If I attack right now, sure we can still infuriate, but I don't think that's lethal. Although we would potentially take out some of the opponent's creatures as well. Also have to watch out for Bristly Bill just killing us next turn. So we might also have to chum block a bunch. So I think we just pass, and then discard. I guess Brazen Collector could still be worth it with Medallion for one mana, if we can give it haste. Maybe the Artist is a bit ambitious anyway. So yeah, all I want is to just get another turn with most of my board still there. We could still use Infuriate defensively as well. Archer's Charm takes out Ornithopter, that happens. They could have just fought Zada if they wanted to. And I guess Kellen also could have destroyed an artifact. So their opponents may be being a little cautious. Never mind, they send in everyone. And then I guess with a land they can still activate Bill, thanks to Cobra. To double the counters. So that's a lot of damage coming across. How do we survive? So let's say we block those two. How much damage is this still? I guess I need to block one more. If I use Infuriate defensively, I'm not really trading for much. So I don't think that's gonna happen. So yeah, it's not looking good. But I think that's the best I have. It 
Take my turn. Would love to find a pump spell that generates treasure. I imagine a ruby medallion's gonna be worth it. Then we can play Collector and Magda, which both make mana. Cast a Reckless Charge. Attack, and then Blazing Crescendo needs to deliver the goods. But can wait to make the Goblin token first. Alright, time for Crescendo. And there's Ancestor's Aid, perfect. So now we can actually cast whatever additional spells we may find. Like a Titan Strength and a Fist of Flame. Wow. We're actually doing it. I had almost lost hope. How about a nice Fist of Flame, maybe after we Titan Strength, so we get to Scry and then draw. Might of the Meek is a bunch more card draw. Oh yes. Opponent says good game, hopefully they don't concede before my turn's over. But uh, yeah, they don't stick around. So that's what you get for playing Mythweaver. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Zimon and Dina. Our hands got some powerful cards, just missing the pump spells, but hopefully we'll be able to find them, and then we can go incredibly wide. Turn two Medallion, turn three. Could play Storm Splitter. Our opponent's gonna be ramping, drawing cards. Hopefully they won't have a ton of removal. Just a Dread Knight to draw, that's fine. So yeah, sequencing the Storm Splitter is going to be interesting. Could of course cast our Token Makers afterwards to make additional Storm Splitters. And now a Reckless Charge, a way to give everything haste. Could play Zada right now, or we can play Storm Splitter. If it gets removed, it's not a disaster, but it would be nice to keep it around. Now we get a chance to attack for one. And then next turn I could already go Zada plus Reckless Charge. Although maybe we want to wait to cast all these in the same turn to go off with Storm Splitter even more. Opponent now with a Flare of Cultivation, ramping even more. Sometimes Zimon and Dina decks are Emergent Ultimatum combo decks that can just cast it to win the game, basically. And uh, yeah, opponent would have the mana to cast it next turn already. And they're gonna sack the Halfling to put an additional land in play. Alright, Blazing Crescendo. So, let's see here. If I play Zada and Blazing Crescendo, trigger Storm Splitter, so we're not necessarily dealing lethal yet. Next turn we can certainly go off. Maybe this turn I just play Zada and pass. And then hopefully next turn if they let me untap with Storm Splitter and Zada, and then we will be able to pretty much uh, empty out our hand. Going for Reckless Charge would have been reasonable here. But uh, I think waiting is going to lead to a slightly more exciting turn. So their opponent can make all the mana they want. A few Mancer is fine, making a snake token each turn that they can sacrifice with Zimon and Dina. Replay the Dread Knight, so 
Yeah, opponents ramping, drawing cards, making creatures. But as long as they don't hit my key creatures, we might be able to combo off. So the moment can activate once again. Ideally, they tap out so we don't need to worry about instant speed interaction. Alright, opponent finds a couple more lanes, enables landfall, making treasure. And Akami puts an extra land in play, so your opponent can keep going. And there's a lot of fetch lanes that can enable landfall next turn for the provisioner. And now a Glissa Sunslayer. Technically a good blocker, but if we can go wide enough, it doesn't matter. Alright, so looks like we got our wish. And now we gotta make it count. Dragon Fodder triggers Storm Splitter. Command triggers them again. And then how about a Reckless Charge? Target Zara. And that's a lot of triggers here. And then we still have a Blazing Crescendo left over. Which is gonna exile a bunch of cards as well. So we might find another pump spell we can cast. Hopefully our opponent lets us go off all the way. So at the very least we're looking at a Samut Sprint. Ancestral Anger would draw a lot of cards as well. And a Lightning Bolt. Alright, I feel like I need to cast Ancestral Anger just because we don't get this opportunity very often. Alright, and now our opponent's gonna concede sadly. So we can have a quick peek at the board. And uh, yeah, with this many Storm Splitters, we would essentially double that amount and then draw cards with each and every one of them. And uh, that's going to be well over 25 damage coming across onto the next one. Okay, we're on the play facing the Emperor. And we've got a keepable hand. Could use an actual token maker to start going wide. But uh, Arcanist is good with the pump spells. We've got a bit of ramp. Opponent does have the turn 1 Utopia Sprawl to set up a turn 2 Emperor. Now we can also give Arcanist haste with a Felonious Rage to immediately attack and get it back. Legion Warboss would have been good if we had an extra mana. So yeah, going Arcanist, Felonious Rage feels pretty mediocre here. So maybe it is Warboss after all. And then hope they take the damage from the token, maybe fearing a Lightning Bolt second main. But nope. So our opponent's got 4 mana. And the Quake Mole with haste is pretty effective. So we take 11. Nope, opponent just hitting for 8. Alright, so can uh, trigger the war boss attack. This time they'll probably respect a pump spell. Opponent blocking the war boss. So sudden breakthrough now, probably the play over anything else. Means I don't get to play Zara this turn, but we can play Arcanist. Which could technically trade for the Quake Mole if we're willing to use a Titan Strength. I think I still take 8 here. And our opponent's gonna keep on ramping. 
Okay, not sure if they're keeping up removal for Zara. It's going to be a Pilgrim as a Chum Blocker. And a Ragavan as well, so plenty of blockers for the opponents. Now we do have options. I could play Zada, have two mana left. I can cast Titan Strength and Rage. Attack, Arcanist gets back Breakthrough, which then also lets me flick a coin and keep going. Yeah, I mean, that's going to be the sequence here. Just hope we figure out a line from there. So I need to do this now to get Arcanist power up. But then we can maybe wait to uh, get the extra goblin token first. And then Arcanist is going to get back. Sudden breakthrough. Mentor onto maybe the Trampler. And this will make lots of treasure now. So now I'm probably going to want to Titan Strength and then flick a coin my own creatures to draw a bunch of cards and then we get to scry first to make sure we find something useful. So bottom a bunch of lanes. Using flick a coin on the opponent's creatures is also an option to just remove a blocker. I guess we can do the math to see if we have lethal and yeah I think we're probably at that point. But uh, this is more exciting. We get to draw five cards and make five replacement treasures. And hopefully find a pump spell we can still cast. Alright, not quite, but uh, opponent still looks to be in trouble. This has him taking... 24. So yeah, just enough for lethal here. And then we still would have been able to make plenty of blockers afterwards. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing the Revy. Imperial Tactician, actually an old school commander card added to Arena recently. So probably plays well in kind of a flash style of uh, creature deck. So yeah, I'll keep. Got some nice ramp. Frank was a powerful threat if it can go unopposed. Better opponent could have quite a bit of interaction. Young Pyromancer isn't bad either. For now we'll try the Ornithopter. Polonius Rage is also quite good with Krenko, if we can immediately give it haste and attack. Opponent flashes in Malcolm. So yeah, that's the type of creature we can expect to face out of this deck. I'm backed up by counter spells. It's going to make it difficult to establish any of our combos. As we see, Memory Lapse discarded, so the opponent's hand must be stacked. Just making some tokens for now. Alright, so we do get the opportunity to maybe resolve Zada, which maybe our opponents took into account and they have some answer to it already. So maybe this is our opportunity to go Krenko plus Felonious Rage. And then we would get four tokens. Yeah, I think that's worth it. And then now they need to answer Krenko, which maybe gives us the opportunity to get Zada going. Playing Zada plus Ancestral Anger in the same turn is pretty good with four tokens in play. And then reading the Revy. They can potentially tap down Krenko as well, but they decide to untap their land. 
to maybe keep up a counter spell instead. So three mana available. All right, Granko gets to attack. So we get a bunch more goblins. The Ravi can be returned pretty cheaply, so I could see getting rid of the tokens instead. And then what's next? Could go Power Stone plus Young Pyromancer. And then wait until the coast is clear for Zada. Opponent counters a Paramancer. So that would have taken care of Zada as well for just one mana. And Delny can also improve the Revy's ability as well as Malcolm. So your opponent could cast something for free. Just gotta hope they don't have another counter spell left, or that we top that Cavern of Souls. Opponents getting rid of the Elite. And now they get to play something for free. A free Strider Lookout. Pretty fitting when you cast it for free. So two cards left. Hopefully they just flash back, join the dance, and tap out. But our opponent's going to keep up their mana. At least we're at a point where we can replay Zada if it does get countered. Alright, that resolves. And then just casting Ancestral Anger is going to give us a bunch of copies. So even if they counter the Anger, it's too late. And now we get to draw a ton of cards. So our patience is paying off. Hoping for more pump spells. Monstrous Rage looks great. And a Blazing Crescendo. Alright, so... Can move to attackers. Send in all the goblin tokens, and then still go Monstrous Rage and Crescendo, which might be enough for a win. If we click the 7 here, all goblins are attacking. Opponent's got a Flood Caller, that's fine. Can let them block. And then Blazing Crescendo Zara. And that's going to be good enough here. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw facing Ella Damri. So a mono green creature deck that's going to try and cheat some expensive cards into play. The good news is that at least they won't have much removal. But the bad news is that they're on the play. And uh, yeah, our deck does not play removal. So our opponent can easily overpower us if they have a good start. This hand I think is worth keeping, could use an extra pump spell, but we have ways to generate mana and tokens. Opponent is deciding which creature to play, at least it's not a mana elf. Allosaurus Shepherd. Turn 2. Brazen Collector doesn't have the best attack into Aladamri, but if they block we can sprint. So that might still be fine. As we see Lotus Cobra so, in two turns, our opponent can likely activate Aladamri. The drawback of having to use pump spells early is that we're going to have fewer cards to eventually combo with Zada. So ideally, we don't need to use them right away. But of course, if they block with Aladamri, I'll oblige. And a safekeeper. That's fine, doesn't really help in the face of pump spells. 
And Captain Lannery to draw. So I'm not hitting on Lannery. Attack with all. And then we can play a pump spell if needed. They might be fine trading Lotus Cobra for Captain Lannery. And then we'll have to reconsider whether or not it's worth saving. Opponent eventually blocks Captain Lannery. So we cannot keep Lannery alive. But we can trade and then leave behind a detective token, which is probably the best we can do here. And at least we don't need to worry about Ella Dumbry next turn. They could already replay it for 5 mana. So it's only a temporary speed bump. Opponent plays an Elves. They're also getting close to activating the Shepherd to pump the team. Although at least Safekeeper, not an Elf. Alright, so next up could already play Zada. The uh, Collector is interested in attacking. I guess the Detective could attack as well, just straight for a Cobra. Weirdly enough, we do have some non-red creatures here with a detective and the human token. Since we have a somewhat sprint to give haste, it's not super important for Zana to be on the battlefield this turn. Opponent does trade Cobra here, it seems. Double block doesn't help against first strike. I think I see what's happening here. Our opponent must have heroic intervention to make their team indestructible. And yeah, it's going to be pretty effective here, essentially taking out both of my creatures. Not a card I necessarily had on my radar, especially in a deck with El Adamri, where you really want to maximize all your creatures. Alright, so we need to rebuild. For now, we can play Zara or go Ornithopter plus Friendship. But yeah, even though Intervention was good here, it was still only a 2 for 1, and it did require a very specific circumstance to be effective. It's not even always good against sweepers, since so many of them either bounce, exile, or decrease toughness. But let's see what we can come up with. Medallion into Zara into a Sandwich Sprint. Isn't all that exciting. We're missing a way to draw cards, but we do get to scry a bunch to maybe find another pump spell for next turn. So I think it's still the play. So bottoming mountain. Squee is fine, but not good enough if her opponent has anything to cheat into play. Titan strength is similar to some with sprints. Lots of scry a bunch. Maybe that's good enough, as opposed to bottoming it and then hitting another land. Don't have to attack with everyone, but uh, I'll try it. Topiary Stomper is next. So opponent gets a chance to shuffle, maybe find a more exciting card on top. Still a little bit short of blocking with the Stomper at least. Elvish Mystic is fine. So what's the grand finale here with Aladomri? Crater Hoof would kill me. Titan of Industry is pretty good too. So, gaining a life and destroying an artifact or making a blocker here are all very effective. 
So the Titan strength does not look nearly as impressive now. And next turn our opponent can activate Shepard to potentially threaten lethal. So yeah, they had a nice leftover here. Otherwise, Titan Strength might have been a little bit more exciting. If we play it and attack all out, opponent maybe takes six or seven damage, but uh, it's not going to be enough. And then we certainly die on the way back. So all I can do is pass and then hopefully draw another pump spell next turn. Could also use Titan Strength in my upkeep to scry and improve my odds of finding one. So, yeah, hopefully they don't force us to chum block or trade anything away. And then we have a chance of still having a good turn. Railway Brawler, I guess, is fine. Doesn't attack right now. And just a Titan getting in. And the Rhino. Okay, so, yeah, the upkeep stop here is pretty vital, so we get the benefits from Zada. Pump the team and scry before taking our draw step. All right, we need a good one. We have to be pretty picky now. Mountain can certainly go. Mindstone would just be a redraw, so may as well bottom. Mountain can go, so a last chance here. Crucible is just too hasty one once. All right, time to top deck something that draws cards, please. Just a mountain. All right, well, we gave it a try, but uh, couldn't quite get there, and I don't think there's any way we survive next turn. So may as well go out on our own terms. But yeah, anything that targets Zada and draws a card would have let us draw four. And then, especially with a discount from Medallion, we can start stringing together more spells and maybe get that critical mass we need to attack for the win. But sadly, it wasn't meant to be here. Opponent lined up their blocks and... I don't think there's a great way to uh, order these. So opponent falls to 12. And an attack will do it. Good game. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Liliana of the Dark Realms. So... Kind of a mono-black control deck. Ragavan's not very likely to connect, but uh, yeah, I'm willing to give it a try. It does have pretty high upside if it does. And then cannot be taken away by a discard spell. And we might get to see Ashling in action, which is also a lot of fun. Opponent's got a Wayfarer's Bobble. So, can set up a turn 3 Liliana, but we will get to connect with Ragavan in the meantime. Next turn, maybe play Ashling. Still waiting on our pump spells. As our opponent's gonna take out Ragavan. Okay. There's something to be said for just playing Zada here. At least if it gets removed, we can still replay it later. But uh, Ashling attacks for more damage, so we'll start there. And then we've got plenty of mountains we can maybe discard to Ashling's ability. Opponent Swamp Cycling just to hit their third land drop, and then they can still sack a bobble maybe. All right, so next turn Liliana could take out Ashling, so it's our last chance to see it in action. And our opponent might have a free spell in hand as well. 
It's going to be grief. Well, I have good news for you. Three mountains. And they had to pitch Necrodominance to that as well. So that feels like a win. Drew a Stormkiln Artist. Another decent four mana payoff. But yeah, we're still missing cards to go with it. I guess it's worth a shot. Hope they don't have a board wipe. It's gonna be Liliana of the Veil instead. We'll deal with the collector. And a Cold Steel Heart. Alright, now's our time to top deck a spell. Ornithopter doesn't quite do it. Could honestly leave Liliana in place since we just have a mountain left. But it seems safer to deal with it. Now Liliana of the Dark Realms can take out one creature. It's gonna be Ashling, so sadly never got to trigger it. But uh, can maybe still see the Stormkiln Artist in action. As a Deep Cavern Bat once again sees a mountain. Sandwich Prince, that's what we're talking about. And uh... Yeah, can attack with everyone. Opponent blocks Ornithopter. And we can scry towards our next pump spell, but our opponent has already given up. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Bristly Bill, so Monogreen Landfall. Hopefully that means not too much removal. And this hand's got a decent mix of mana, token makers, and pump spells. Turn 1 Hardened Scales is scary, giving them additional plus 1 counters. And now Arcane Signets, so next turn they can play Bill and immediately play a land. So for now, between Goblin and Iron Crag, yeah, I guess maybe Iron Crag still makes more sense. So we don't have to waste the treasure if we want to play Zara. And then next turn we could also go Goblin plus Friendship. Double spell. And then maybe set up an exciting turn with Zara, where we can immediately cast uh, Ancestral Anger to draw three or four cards. Mindstone as well. Cannot really use the Mindstone very efficiently without having to use the treasure. Just go Wily Goblin, Mindstone and Friendship. Next turn have 6 mana, so I could play Zara, Anger and Dreadmoss Ire. Although I guess Ire only works if we're targeting an attacking creature, so it doesn't work on Zara unless we play it now. Which is an option. Maybe a way to destroy the Arcane Signet. Yeah, normally I would wait to play Zara, but because we specifically have Dreadmoss Ire, playing it first might work out. And then at least one of the tokens from Friendship also has haste. Our opponent can just activate build to double the counters, which is what they're looking at. Alright, so take 10, we're at 12. At least they don't trample. So what's the plan here? We want to generate tokens and then cast our Ancestral Anger this turn, most likely. Um, could also attempt to take out the Signet. But we're mostly using this as a setup turn to find more pump spells that actually increase power for next turn. So with that said, yeah, I guess if I go Wily Goblin, Friendship, then we can still Anger and Ire. And Dwarven Mine can also make an extra token next turn. Unleash Fury is a good one. 
So, can attack. And then is it worth it to cast the Ire? I don't actually think it is, even though we set them back on one mana. I really want to be able to combine it with Unleash Fury next turn. So one token's gonna have to chum block. And now a Caretaker. Alright. Your opponent gets a few more counters. Goblins are a little bit more valuable than non-goblins in this deck. And a Blazing Crescendo. Alright. So we don't have a way to give creatures haste at the moment. Could channel Crucible to make some hasty creatures as well. But uh, let's start with making a dwarf. So, I think with Crescendo Fury and Dreadmoss Ire, we might already have enough. Yeah, only have the one legendary, so it would be three mana to channel Crucible. Which, I guess, still leaves me four mana to both Crescendo and Fury. Although we might also find more pump spells of the Crescendo we can cast. So, I guess step one might be to cast the Crescendo in case we find a way to give creatures haste. So we get one additional attacker. Captain Lannery has haste. Lightning Bolt can go upstairs and a Storm Splitter. Okay, a little bit short on mana to get the most out of Storm Splitter this turn. Krenko also lacks haste. So I think we're just going to attackers here. And then Dreadmaw's Ire. Plus Unleash Fury. I might just do it here. Yeah, that's all over 20 damage. Sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing a Florian. Could be a vampire deck, but doesn't have to be. Hopefully it is more of a creature synergy deck as opposed to just black red aggro with a bunch of removal. Since creature decks we can potentially go over the top and combo off. But decks with a lot of disruption are going to be a lot more difficult to combo through. Turn to Steamkin. Actually survives. Next turn we can Outburst, Storm Splitter can make more tokens, and then we've got two pump spells. So we've got more or less all the tools we need. But it just takes one board wipe to set us back. I will take the hit since all our creatures are valuable. And our opponent found a 4 mana removal spell for Steamkin. That's still fine. For now, play Storm Splitter. And then next turn we could play Zara and Monstrous Rage in the same turn. Also reasonable to leave Storm Splitter back to block Florian, but now we don't give them an incentive to take it out. But yeah, so far we haven't seen any other vampires. Opponent finds a land. And the Witch Docker Frenzy will take out Storm Splitter anyway. Okay, so if I were to play Zara, I can still Monstrous Rage and that's it. I think I wait and then next turn goes Zara plus Aid. And with the treasures we can still cast our other pump spells. And then for now we can just activate Castle Embereth. So I'm hoping our opponent taps out without destroying my creatures here. And then, yeah, we could potentially win out of nowhere. Kalitos is a good one. And they have some mana left over. The problem here is if they can remove Zara before I get the treasures, then 
I wouldn't be able to cast my Alter Pump spells and get the benefit. And our opponent is very clearly aware of what Zada is capable of and leaves blockers back and two mana. So yeah, if I go for Zada, it's unlikely to work out this turn. So maybe it is another setup turn with Ornithopter. Yeah, maybe next turn we'll go for it. Silver Smote Ghoul is fine. So the Vampires are starting to show up now. A ghoul also very good with Kalitos, since they can sacrifice it, attack, and bring it back. But I would be happy if they tap out. So Nixilis is fine. So one mana left to worry about. And then I wouldn't mind drawing another pump spell since we'll have the mana to cast them. Shake down the locals. <laughs> Your punishment is my entertainment. They'll Skeletos attack to bring back the ghoul. We could also technically activate Castle Embereth to block. I'll see if they have a response to this. So yeah, double blocking Kalitas would normally be reasonable, but in this case, we actually prefer hanging on to as many tokens as possible. Florian triggers and finds a swamp. Ghoul is back, and we get to untap. So it's party time. Kazada. Step one. Step two. Ancestors aid, leaving Castle Embereth untapped. Make a bunch of treasure. And then go to attackers. All going face. And then sack our treasures. Casting both pump spells is gonna end up being better than activating the castle. But yeah, this is why being patient can pay off sometimes. Just waiting for that right opportunity to go for it. And this should be plenty. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. So yeah, we got to see our Zada Brawl deck in action. And it definitely plays like a combo deck as opposed to a typical mono red aggro, which means that sometimes you're not going to play Zada the first chance you get, and instead it's sometimes better to wait until the coast is clear and you can get some immediate value out of Zada's ability. And that's also why I'm not playing a lot of the pump spells, which might be more powerful in theory, but that require your creature to be attacking, because sometimes Zada won't be attacking, and instead we're just going to play it and start targeting it with pump spells to boost up the rest of our team. Now, the overall win rate with a deck is still pretty low, so I would not recommend it as a deck to get a lot of quick daily wins, since it does sometimes take a while to find a matchup where you actually get to enact your game plan, and that isn't filled with a ton of removal. Even if you try your best to play around interaction, sometimes the opponent just has too much of it, and you never get to establish your own game plan, or you're up against decks that are just much faster and get to start out ramping on turn one already, whereas we're a little bit behind the curve there. So, not the most powerful deck, but still a lot of fun when you do actually get to combo off. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day!